Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you're all good. We're going to be talking today about budget counters in Pokemon Go. I'm talking about the raid system specifically, because over the last couple of months, you may have heard me ranting about it in live streams, in videos, etc., on Discord, on social media. It seems that a lot of people, maybe low-level players, maybe new players to the game, etc., um, think that Niantic's recommended is the recommended has worked flawlessly all five years of the game. Shut the f*** up. Apologies everyone, he seems to have escaped from the sketch world. I've seen way too many videos online of people saying these are the best counters, this is the top 10, these are the 10 best Pokemon to power up and they are chocked full of legendaries and future megas and stuff which as a low level player can be quite daunting if someone's saying hey get a Mewtwo to level 50 because it gets two Megas in the future and you might be sitting there going well Mewtwo hasn't actually been in a raid rotation since I've picked up the game again or joined etc. What I wanted to do is explain how you can prepare yourself for getting yourself a raid squad, very good Pokemon that are cheap, efficient and in some cases actually better than legendaries that are already available in the game. Certain typings have that covered. Let's dive into it, shall we? To begin with, though, a few tips in terms of how you might be able to source certain Pokémon that I'm going to list in this video. It will pair down to a couple of aspects of the game. Most importantly, what the spawns are at the time that you are playing the game. We have seasonal spawns now. Every quarter of the year, the spawns rotate, they shift to a different season, which means a spawn rotation, complete change, new Pokemon in eggs, in general raids, etc. You have to pay attention to what is appearing around you at the time. Alongside of that, you've also got events. You know, we talk about events all the time on the channel, we play the events, we grind for the shinies, etc. Pay attention to what events are happening at the time that you you are playing and you can look at that there's a spawn pool there's an egg pool there's a ray pool and you can judge and go right okay i could target this pokemon you may remember the secrets of the jungle event i was targeting drillber because drillber is a very very useful pokemon and extremely cheap another good aspect of the game is the trade to evolve pokemon and these are pokemon that basically if you trade them with another player they reduce the candy cost to evolve to potentially nothing which is fantastic for saving resources this list isn't a finite absolute it's a case of this is a good base this is a good level playing field to get yourself to and then after that, you can start reaching up to the mythicals, the legendaries, the megas, etc. And the pseudo legendaries, don't forget those. Let's begin with the fire types in Pokemon Go. They're limited use, to be fair. You don't really see fire types cropping up too many times in the raid counters. Good fire type Pokemon, such as Darumaka, which evolves into Darmanitan, it's featured in events. It is in a 10 kilometer egg mon, so it's a little bit tricky to sometimes get your hands on, but if you can hatch one, 50 candy to evolve, you can walk it, I think it's a five kilometer buddy. That's the best non-mega, non-legendary fire type in the game, Darmanitan. Go for those. The other options you've got, of course, are the starters. Starters are quite readily available. They're in quests, they've been featured in community days. Speaking of community days, We've got Tepig coming up at the end of the year in the December reroll. December the 18th and 19th, we'll see all of the 11 Community Day Pokemon from 2021 featured in the Wild Spawn. So that might be a good opportunity to stock up on some Tepig if you want to build up a basic fire type squad. But also, you've got like Charizard in there, it's a good option. The best option, I would say, is Blaziken, best of the fire type starters. And it does get a Mega in the future. So if you prepare yourself with a good one of those, a bit of a budget type fire counter is Flare. Now you'll see the evolutions crop up in this list all the time because of the fact that they are so readily available. Eevee is in quests, it's in the Community Day rollback at the end of the year. I'm sure a bunch of you got Eevees on the Community Day in August itself. It only costs 25 candy to evolve. The only downside obviously is that it is a random evolve between Vaporeon and Jolteon. Water types, now these are extremely useful Pokemon. Water types are used all the time to take down certain legendaries and mythicals. You'll see people talk about Kyogre. Use Kyogre all the time. Use Gyarados. I'm not even going to recommend you use Gyarados because 400 candy evolution for a low level player or a new player or somebody who's come back to the game recently is quite daunting. What I would recommend you go for is Krabby evolves into Kingler and that is actually the best DPS water type attacker out there. Aside from Shadows, obviously. Don't forget you've got the Shadow Pokemon in this 
whole thing as well. I'm not even talking about the Shadow Mons because they cost so much Stardust to power up. You can use the starters. Now, Blastoise has a Mega in the game already, so if you can get yourself a Squirtle, potentially build up one of those, I would say. Mudkip isn't the bad choice either. It is a little bit more difficult to get your hands on at the moment. It might be featured in some of the quests and the spawns a bit later on. And of course, we mentioned the Evolutions Vaporeon. Very, very tanky. Back in the day of 2016 and 2017, it was probably like number one. Now it's well down the list, but cheap to evolve. Evolution cheap to evolve, so that's a good starting block. Grass types, they have a bit of limited use in Pokemon Go. We're gonna start with another 2021 Community Day Pokemon is Roserade. Roselia evolving into Roserade is actually one of the best grass types in the game bar none, because there are no grass-type legendaries that are actually good. Verizion is in the bin, mate. December reroll coming up, you can actually prepare and get some good Roserade, and that's a decent army of grass-types in there. Bulbasaur evolving into Venusaur, that gets a Mega as well, it's really solid as long as you get Frenzy Plant on it. You've obviously got Trico getting to Sceptile, obviously you want Frenzy Plant on Sceptile as well. And another pretty budget counter is Breloom, Shroomish. Generation 3 little mushroom Pokemon evolving into Breloom. It's a very DPS heavy attacker, so it's not bad shout. And of course, we can't forget Leafeon. Leafeon is the grass evolution of Eevee. Again, Comday, Eevee, get loads of those. Very easy to get your hands on, very cheap to evolve. You need a Mossy Lure in order to be able to evolve it. So, very simple way of getting a squad of six. You put down the Mossy Lure and evolve six Eevee, bang, straight there, you've got six Leafeon. And as long as they've got the decent move set on them, they're actually a solid Pokemon. Rock type Pokemon. Now, Rhyhorn right evolving into Rhyperia. It's an insanely useful Pokemon with the Community Day move Rock Wrecker. That will be appearing in probably one star raids and two kilometer eggs over the December Community Day weekend. The rollback, because the previous year's Pokemon always feature in the eggs and the raids. Uh, obviously, they do nest as well, so keep an eye on your local nest. If you have a Rhyhorn nest, go and grind it, people. Another Pokemon is Rog and Roller. Now, this Pokemon sort of gets overlooked, certainly got overlooked by me, but Rog and Roller evolving into Gigalith. Six shiny, by the way. That is a trade to evolve Pokemon. If you trade Rock and Roller, it actually doesn't cost you any candy to evolve to from stage two. Baldor, I think it is, up to Gigalith. It's pretty good. It gets a really good moveset of Smackdown and Rock Slide. So it's actually a really good choice. The final one I would recommend you go for, and this is available in the tasks, the research task you pick up from Pokestops is Aerodactyl. It's a bit of a glass cannon, I have to say. Very, very glassy. No evolve costs whatsoever. So if you get a good IV one from the quest, it's a case of just power it up. But Aerodactyl does get a mega in the future, and it will be the best DPS rock type attacker in the game, I'm pretty sure. Very, very low on the TDO. Aerodactyl, I believe it is in win five raids. Fighting types. Now, fighting type Pokemon are by far and away one of the most useful. It's imperative you have a fighting type squad. And we've actually got two Pokemon in it that have the trade to evolve bonus with them. So first and foremost is the Chop evolving into the Champ. You can trade to evolve those Pokemon, trade the Chop, and it will cost you no candy to get Machoke up to the Champ, which is excellent for low level players. It means there's fewer resources to spend. It was the January community day for this year. So it's again going to be featured in the spawns of the December reroll. So again, that's a really good opportunity. Low level players, pay attention, seriously. Catch all the Chop you can, trade them with friends, and then hopefully you can get some lucky ones, and evolve them. And it will cost you nothing, really, to power them up, to evolve them at all, and then you've got yourself a really solid fighting type team. Don't forget you've also got Shadow Machop and the Rocket Stops, which is even better in terms of DPS. We're also going to talk about Conkelda. Obviously, Timber is a little bit more difficult to come by because it's a Raid and Egglock Mon, and even at the moment, it's not in the level one Raids. It is a trade to evolve Pokemon, so you can save yourself 200 candy because, I think it's good, uh, evolving into Conkelda actually costs 200 candy. It's double the normal cost, but if you trade them, hopefully get a lucky one, it will cost you nothing. Conkelda is the top choice, really, in terms of DPS times TDO. Solid, dark type Pokemon. We've already got Darkrai in the raid system, so I've said if you can go for some of those at the moment, go and get them. Don't ignore the legendary Pokemon and the mythical Pokemon in the tier 5 raids. They are top, top tier most of the time. Ignore the Swords of Justice trio, by the way, and Cresselia. Put them in the bin for November. Budget dark type counters are the following, and this is where another factor of efficiency is going to play a role, is dual type Pokemon. Pokemon that have two different typings, and if they get good stats, the right moves, they can actually be used to take down two different typings of Pokemon, which is excellent. And the first choice I'm going to recommend you go for is Sneasel, evolving into Weavile. 
We had a research day earlier in the year. Weevil is a dark and ice type, and it is a very, very good DPS attacker of both the dark and the ice type pool. So that's a really good budget counter. You can cover yourself with two different typings on that one mon. The other one I recommend going for is Honchcrow. Murkrow evolving into Honchcrow, it needs a Sinnoh Stone. Quite a few of these Pokemon need a Sinnoh Stone to evolve, but you can get them from the daily battles with your friends or from PvP, or I think there's quests for them as well. But Honchcrow, Again, dual typing of Dark and Flying, and you'll see it crop up again when I talk about Flying types. It gets a very good moveset on either side. It's a very, very heavy DPS attacker again, quite glassy, much like Weavile, but a very, very good choice. Obviously, don't forget about Larpetar and Tyranitar. You can get them out of 12km regs. We're going to jump into the Flying types very shortly, but before we move forward with that, I want to make something clear. Even if a Pokemon gets very good stats, Niantic can still hamper it and ruin it with a bad moveset, and the flying type's the perfect case in point. So I'm going to recommend, if you want to build up a flying type squad, to take down Verizion, because Verizion later in November is double weak to flying. Honchcrow, dual typing as well. Pidgeot, Pidgey, very, very common spawn. Pidgeot gets a Mega, so that's good prep. The other one I recommend you go for is Unpheasant. That's Pidove's final evolution. Very cheap to evolve. Pidove, common again. Tornadus has been in the raid system twice, both its forms, and both of its forms are worse than these three Pokemon, purely because of the fact it gets a terrible moveset. So it can have good stats, but a poor moveset means that it's not as good, so that's something to bear in mind. Psychic type Pokemon. Now obviously Mewtwo is king of the hill. If you can get Mewtwo, trade or whatever, do so. You've got things like Metagross in there as well. They're really, really solid, but a little bit more difficult to come by. You do have some very cheap and easy Pokemon that you could replace them with. Espeon is a very, very solid Psychic type Pokemon. Cheap to evolve. Again, Eeveelution, 25 candy to evolve. You need to have it as your buddy and evolve it in the day. That's solid. The other one I recommend you go for is Abra evolving into Alakazam. Outclassed by new legendaries, etc., pseudo legendaries, whatever. But it's a trade to evolve Pokemon, and we've already said that they're very, very useful. You can trade to evolve your Abra, and it is available because it was a 2020 community day, it will be in the eggs and the raids in December of this year for the rollback. So if you fancy getting yourself a little squad of Alakazam, trade to evolve the Abra, hopefully they go lucky, fingers crossed, uh, and then evolve that way, and you save yourself some resources. Electric types. Now, electric types are dominated by the legendaries. You've got Zekrom, Raikou, Zapdos, Thunderous, Therian form, there's so many out there and hopefully when they do make a return you can grind them because Zekrom is absolutely king of the hill. If you can't get yourself a squad of those readily, first the one I'm going to recommend that you go for is Magnezone. It's an interesting Pokemon because obviously Magnemite is actually quite a common spawn, but it is a evolve on location, much like Leafeon. You need a magnetic lure to evolve Magneton to Magnezone. Magnezone can tank Kyogre with Blizzard a lot better than Zekrom and Raikou, etc. It's got a lot of bulk behind it, really, so it's a pretty solid choice. On the other end of the scale, you've got Electivire, which evolves from Electabuzz and Elekid in the eggs. That is the best non-legendary, non-mega, non-shadow electric type in the game. You can get shadow Electabuzz, so that's something to look out for. You've also got to remember that Electabuzz was a 2020 community day back in November. It will be in the raids and the egg system in December, so that's a good way to get some potentially good IV Electabuzz and evolve them up to Electifier. You can go with the Evolution route if you fancy it. Jolteon may not be the best option, but if you're really struggling, Jolteon, if you've got loads of leftover Eevee, 25 candy, evolve your Jolteon, it will do the job. Dragon type Pokemon. Now this one, there isn't really any escaping the pseudo legendaries, I'm afraid. First and foremost is Gibble. Gibble, and evolving into Garchomp, is insanely powerful. It was a community day in June of this year, which means it's going to be spawning in December. And that's another one I'm going to recommend you go for. I will do a proper December guide closer to the time. But Gibble spawns in December. You catch every single one, people. Catch every single Gibble you can. Trade them. Use all the resources, all the loopholes in the systems that you can. Get bonus candy for trading further distance, etc. Maximize on that. Get a squad of Garchomp, and then you are set. The other choice you've got, of course, are Dragonite from Dratini. That is in the 10km regs. You've also got Salamance which evolves from Bagon, and Bagon is in the wild spawns at the moment, infrequently. Three sort of pseudo-legendary Pokemon, but they've all three had a community day. Gibble was a current community day, 
so go for that. Fairy type Pokemon. Now, the best option, cheap option, I'm gonna say that you go for is Sylveon. Now, another evolution, cheap to evolve in terms of candy, but this one does require you to get 70 buddy hearts, I believe, which is getting it to the second stage of buddies, which might take about a week or so. So it's a little bit of a laborious process to get a squad of Sylveon, but once you've done it, it's actually right up there. It's a pretty solid fairy type. Another option I would say you go for, which we had spawning earlier in the year, it spawns in the wild infrequently. I think it might be in the quest. It might change for when December comes around, but Ralts evolving into Gardevoir. Really, really solid pick. Gardevoir gets a Mega in the future, so if you get yourself a good team of those, that's good future prep as well. If you're really struggling, the Fable from Clefairy is kind of a budget option. It does get the right moves, but it's not the best. It's cheap. 50 candy to evolve it, done. Ground type Pokemon. Now, the meta for this is dominated by Garchomp. I've already said go for Garchomp. For the dragon type sector you can go for it for the ground type sector because it's community day move earth power absolutely obliterated the ground type meta if for whatever reason you wanted to go for something a bit different drillbert evolving into excadrill is probably the best dps attacker because it gets gets mud slap drill run very very good move set 50 candy to evolve it excadrill is a very very good pick i'd already mentioned rhyhorn and rhyperia for the rock type meta it again is cropping up you'll see there's quite a few repeats with this because of dual typings rhyperia really really good rock type it's also a very very good ground type very very bulky so um that's another one to go for people the ice type category probably one of the most useful sectors of the raid system that you could actually build up a team for and the first one obviously glaceon really cheap and easy Evolution, 25 candy this again is exactly like leafion you need the glacial lure to evolve glaceon and you can stack up on a whole bunch of eevee Evolve them all at once, sat at one location. We've already talked about Weavile in the dark types. It's an ice type as well. It gets a very, very good ice type attacking moveset. And don't forget Mamoswine. Mamoswine actually is probably the overall best ice type Pokemon. Swinub will be spawning in the winter season spawns. Over the next three months, it's going to be spawning in the wild. You can get Swinub candy, you can evolve them, you can trade them, etc. It also comes off the Glacial Lure. So if you're evolving your Glaceon, Swinub will be popping up off of your glacial lure spawns. Steel types. Now, steel types is an interesting one because it's mostly dominated completely by Metagross. And I am gonna recommend that you try and get a squad of Metagross. It's very rarely spawning at the moment. It occasionally appears, but it has had events in the past. Metagross is the undisputed best steel type Pokemon in the game and it will never be outclassed. But a couple of cheap alternatives are Excadrill. It gets a solid steel type moveset. Another one that's a dual typing is Magnezone. Now, Magnezone, it doesn't get the ultimate steel type moveset. And we're gonna break a little bit of tradition here in the sense that I'm gonna recommend that you go for a mythical, but this mythical is unlike any other mythical in the game, Melmetal. From Meltan, the mystery box that spawns between sort of 58 to 60 plus Meltan within an hour, just like an incense, it will mean that you can evolve Meltmetal very, very quickly. When it's a steel type, it gets very, very good moves. It's actually very lucrative if you wanted to use it for fighting type or electric or rock because it has such a good move pool set it's got very good stats it's a really good pick do your meltan boxes people best to go for that on a double catch candy spot hour by the way cacnea ghost type pokemon this meta is dominated really by origin giratina and mega gengar is right up there but if we're going to pair it back gengar in its normal form is a still pretty solid as a ghost type. Very, very DPS, extremely glassy, but it's a trade to evolve Pokemon. So actually getting Gengar can be very, very candy efficient if you trade Ghastly, and Ghastly is spawning everywhere, particularly at the moment we've had the Halloween event. I hope you've picked up a few from the Halloween event. It's also in the normal quest system with Make Three Great Throws, I believe it is. Like a lot of Pokemon, actually, it is featured in the raids and the eggs December because it was a 2020 Community Day Pokemon for July. The other one I'm going to sort of break the tradition of the pseudo legendary is Litwick, purely because of the fact we've actually had Litwick spawning in the Halloween event. Chandelure is a really, really good ghost type Pokemon. It's also a really good fire type Pokemon, but I didn't put it in that list because there are quite a lot of other options. Bug type Pokemon. Now, bug types are always playing like third or fourth fiddle to other typings in terms of raid attackers. So the squad isn't necessarily something you need to look out for, but a couple of options for you. Beedrill, 
Beedrill gets a Mega. It's the only bug type Mega in the game as of now. Weevil will be featured in the 2020 Community Day rollback sort of thing, you know. It will be in the Eggs and the Raid system in December, so that's a potential to go for. Both of these get a Mega in the future is Scyther evolving into Sizzle. Very, very solid, gets a really good move set. It's got loads of resistances as well because Sizzle is a Steel and Bug type Pokemon. I don't know why I didn't put that in the Steel type sector, but there it is. It's a Steel and Bug type. You could use it for both typings, to be honest. Mega Sizzle, don't know when that will be coming out. Also, you can use Pinsir. Pinsir, very, very budget type counts because it doesn't need to evolve, but it does get a Mega as well. Mega Pinsir will be in the game at some point in the future. And finally, to round out this whole video is Poison types, and we're right back where we started. Roserade is the best Poison type attacker in the game at the moment. And the best thing about that is, hopefully you paid attention, it's also in the grass type sector. It's also a 2021 Community Day Pokemon, so it's gonna be spawning in December in the wild. It's a really good Pokemon to chase, so go for it. Dual type Pokemon, actually very, very useful. A couple of other sort of like D tier options. You can obviously use poison type moves on Beedrill, like we mentioned for the bug types. It's not the best, but Mega Beedrill, you could get a poison type Mega Boost. That's all right. Venusaur does actually get poison type moveset as well as Sludge Bomb. And if you feel like it, Gengar does get poison type movesets, certainly a charged move. Roserade king of the hill in that sector. Obviously we're not going to talk about normal type Pokemon because normal type Pokemon aren't actually useful in the meta at all. That is going to be the budget Pokemon that I recommend you go for and it's a list basically to say if you have nothing, if you're starting out at a fresh playing field, try to work towards a squad of some of these Pokemon if you can. Pay attention to whatever legendary is in the cycle. I'm going to give you a best, the best example I can give you for this is the fact that November is filled with legendary raid bosses that are actually worse in terms of being a raid counter or a gym attacker in the PvE system than all of the Pokemon I've listed in this video. Cresselia is about as useful as using a sieve to carry water. Pointless. But um, let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful, useful. Is there any Pokemon you are specifically going to be trying to get a team of? And on the note of building up raid teams, I want to give a little reference to this video. I came up with six teams of Pokemon, six squads, six typings that would actually help cover every legendary available within that day. The raid system nowadays is all about efficiency and dealing damage. I've seen raids where people are bringing in Lugia and Giratina versus Darkrai, which is stupid. And we're going to end this video with some information. Niantic's is recommended looks at the charge move of the legendary or mythical Pokemon that you are trying to take down and finds the Pokemon that you have that is resistant to it. That's why you're seeing people using Lugia versus Darkrai with Focus Blast. So long as you're doing super effective damage in the raid lobby, you will take down the legendary faster, which means you have more Premier Balls, which means you have more chance of catching them, which means you have a better opportunity to build up an even better team of whatever the typing of legendary that you are trying to take down. I hope that that's cleared things up. I hope that has steered people in the right direction, hopefully, because obviously I personally would love to see people who are new to the game doing well in the raid system, getting into the swing of building up a good squad of Pokemon. I don't wish to see Lugia in any more raid parties. <laughs> With that, I'm going to say, Thank you very much for watching everybody. Please do make sure to subscribe if you are new with the notifications on so you don't miss any uploads or live streams. And of course, smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. Do let me know if you wanna see a bit more of this sort of informational video and if you've got any ideas of what you would like tips and tricks sort of thing. Let me know because I'm only too happy to try and be more helpful if I can. But yeah, I will see you all in the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Do take care.